All right, everybody, welcome to our Monday Zoom. Today we are discussing a little bit, jumping the gun because it hasn't launched yet, but it's launching this week. This week. Yep, our creatine plus HMB yep. combo. We have been super excited awesome. about this one. Yes. Um, also, we've been using it for- Since high school. Right, <laughs> but specifically this one, we've been using it for a while. But really guys, mm -hmm. creatine is one of the most research and proven supplements. Yeah, um, 50 for, plus years. Yeah, for boosting muscle yeah. power, strength, overall performance. Recovery. And there's so many in recovery and there's so many other things um, about it that people don't really understand. And that really has to do with the brain. And that's um, a lot of it what we want to drill home with today. Absolutely. Because of the fact that we all associate creatine with muscle building, and men. bodybuilders, men. Right. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna bash a little, not bash, but we're gonna <laughs> uncover a little bit of those stigmas yeah. because it is not just for men. I have been taking it myself for a very long time. It is so crucial to your health. I mean. The, again, the studies are there 50 plus years that this, that creatine is 100% effective. I mean, this is yeah. legit. Like That's we legit. all need to be taking this every single day. Hundreds and, then, of studies. and then we've also added HMB. So Ryan's yeah. going to go into the science behind it all. And then yeah, I'll probably interrupt when he starts to get a little too No, that's involved. awesome. Yeah, you're right on the money. And both of these, the creatine and the HMB, are just derivatives or metabolites of other amino acids. So in, for creatine, um, creatine is, is a naturally occurring non-essential amino acid. It's a derivative of other, other amino acids. So our body does make it on its own somewhat, somewhat. So like our body on average needs one to three grams roughly of creatine a day just to function. And so half of that comes from diet though, but dietary sources are somewhat limited. We can only find it in what red meat, seafood, really those two main categories. So vegetarians, of course, don't get enough typically creatine. Uh, and then the rest of it, the body can make on its own by breaking down tissues and freeing it up and making creatine. So by the liver and the kidneys. Um, but yeah, and because of that though, creatine has played such an important role in our, on our, in our smooth muscle. So in our skeletal muscle and high energy demand centers like our brain and our heart. And so, you know, but like Lisa said, 50 plus years, hundreds of studies, and there's a hundred percent, it works. And so why are not more people not taking it? Do you have a good answer to that? Right. Uh, I mean, I know a lot of people are, don't get me wrong. No, I really Very popular in the bodybuilding, sure. weightlifting. But men. I think outside of that, why they don't is just because of that stigma. We think like, oh, it's just for bodybuilding. It's right. just for men. And this whole thing, like, it causes you to gain weight, which we're also going to debunk that too. Yeah, oh, totally. To totally, totally. So let's listen to this for real quick. And we'll talk about creatine first, then we'll talk about HMB. So if you think about creatine as a sor source of fuel um, and it deposits in our tissue, so it's, it's in our tissue. So an average person has about 120, between 100 and 120 millimoles per kilogram, right? When you start supplementing with creatine, it can go as high as 160 millimoles per kilogram. And that's just the concentration in the tissue. So now you're talking about roughly a 30 plus percent, 30 percent plus uh, increase in deposits, in stores of creatine. And that's a really important concept because people often think that like they need to take, and this is me, I feel kind of guilty for doing this, but I'll take it before a workout thinking it's fuel for my workout. That's actually not, that's not the truth. Right. Yeah, you can take it after, it's actually preferred to be taken after work. And we'll talk about that later on how to take. But um, so the benefits are though, not just for people, and Lisa wants to talk about this too, but not just for athletes, it is for everybody. It's for everybody because creatine being a major contributor of fuel for the cells, uh, and respiration. It's great for everything Lisa said. And now for brain health, um, I'm just so excited to have this product on finally on right. the market for us. And a lot of it with brain health. So as with many things, unfortunately, things decline as we age. Oh, true. Things true. decline with also stressors. So if you think about like the, the creatine levels in our brain, uh, even stressors of like lack of sleep, too much exercise, things like that can cause the depletion. Yep. So that's where the benefit of supplement, supplementing with creatine for the brain um, shows like increased cognitive function, improved memory. Yes. Uh, and then the extreme stressors, right? Um, uh, injury, trauma. Good point. Know, stuff like Great that point. is the same thing that also decreases the creatine. And per, studies are proven to... Yep to help benefit these, the brain in these individuals. Yeah, I love the point you just made though. For people that are in, have injuries, creatine has been shown to be extremely beneficial in the recovery of these injuries. So, you know, I mean, obviously as athletes, we all get injuries, but people just in general, are always dealing with pain and, and muscle, musculoskeletal related injuries. So creatine is an awesome tool for that as well. Right, so, awesome. so we've, got, we've got muscle, energy, brain, recovery, 
Yeah. Um, and yep. I mean, so let's talk about how the mechanism of actions, because we we know let's debunk actually what the stigma of we think it maybe causes us to gain weight or uh, water retention, put it that way. Because you think you know that what that's what creatine does, it brings water into the body. Through body. Osmosis. But yeah, it's not it does. It's not like an increasing water weight. This is into the cells. It, well, it is, but, it, but it is water weight, actually. It's just into the skeletal muscle cell. Right. So we're not, yeah. it's not like we're pumping up fat cells or increasing the number of fat cells or anything like that. We're right. actually improving our body composition. If you ever hear us talk about how important body composition is, it's the most paramount thing you should be think about, thinking about when you're working on your food, your nutrition, your exercise, and all that. Right. And like speaking female specifically, we also hear a lot, I'm sure you think this too, but if you lift weights, sorry, our dog is having dreams. <laughs> yes, if you can hear him whimpering, that's a dream. <laughs> um, okay, so strength training can <laughs> defer. Right, go ahead, please. Okay, strength training can cause us to bulk up. That's what we think. Okay, that is not true. Okay, it, it helps your body composition, as Ryan was just saying. And if the more muscle we have, the more we burn fat, the higher our metabolism. Correct. And this kind of goes with the same thing. It is literally allowing us, it's helping us to build muscle, to be more functional at what we're doing. Um, therefore, our body composition is changing, right? Our muscle mass is going up and our fat mass is going down. That's why we love to focus on the lean body mass. That's the goal here. So you just have to switch your mentality when you're thinking about it. Like, trust me, I'm not going to take anything that is going to cause me to feel like fluffy and, and put on it. weight and bloated. Yeah, absolutely. That's not my goal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's anybody's goal. So um, just wanting you to know, again, this is not just for men. This is for across the board. And there are so many proven benefits of creatine and females. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. telling you, you could, I, I hate saying Google it because you get Careful too much nonsense <laughs> in there, but I mean, re, right, like reliable, legit studies. Um, and if you need help finding some of those, maybe we can weed them out and use the sources that we use, but yes. so many health benefits. And then I don't know if you want to talk about it now, HMB. Because, well, hold on. I wanted to highlight okay. instead of study, 12 week okay. double blind. So there was a 12 week double blind placebo controlled study, which is like the gold standard when you're talking about trials and studies, right? So in adults with sarcopenia, which we've talked about before, it's kind of sort of that skinny fat syndrome where people have a lack of muscle mass, but they don't really look like they're morbidly obese. Anyway, those people analyze grip strength, gait speed, chair stand test, body composition, inflammatory markers, all of which improved with statistical significance. And I can share that study with you guys. But anyway, that's the type of stuff we're looking for here. And, you know, so we, we feel very confident standing here and recommending a, a, a supplement like this for 50 years of usage and over hundreds of studies. So yes, absolutely, Lisa. Let's talk about HMB. But there are other yeah. forms of creatine. Oh. The most dominant one and the one we really want is creatine monohydrate. monohydrate. That's what's in here because I... I've already gotten that email yep. question. Yep. Um, so just if you're monohydrate, yep, it's the most well studied, and honestly, it's the most affordable. Yeah. So that's another you know good thing. All right, guys, HMB. HMB is also another derivative of an amino acid. It is derived from leucine. Now, if you recognize leucine, you'll recognize it as one of the branch chain amino acids. It is an essential amino acid, and we preach about it because it's so important in muscle protein synthesis. And so when leucine breaks down, it makes HMB. That is what's helping the body, A, go into muscle protein synthesis. So help us build lean skeletal muscle. And B, it also inhibits the breakdown. So it interrupts proteolysis. And so it slows down the degradation of muscle mass, which of course, like Lisa talks about, starting in the age of 30, we really do start to lose a significant amount of muscle mass. So clearly HMB plays a really important role. And there's also a ton of studies to support HMB as well. It's naturally occurring and it's great for recovery. I say recovery. Recovery yeah. aspect is huge. But also it's yes. like, with the age and yes. we continue to push our bodies, yep. we don't recover as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, it's just such a amazing little combination supplement here. It, it, it is, but again, not just for athletes. We're not talking about an athlete only supplement. Yes, that is how this is going to look. And it will be talked about that way because we always encourage fitness and, and being active, leading an active lifestyle and focusing on body composition. But this is for also, there was a study, here we go again, with sedentary adults on a, a HMB with vitamin D3, I think, and showed tremendous benefit in muscle protein. Right, it, it, it helps prevent muscle wasting. Yes. That's the bottom line. Yes, As we age, our muscle wastes away. This helps prevent that. Like, again, all this is about like prevention of, of uh, things that happen to us when we age, really. So we yeah. want to get on top of it. Yep. Yeah. 
So actually, I wanted to comment. I made a note because I thought it was cool. I know a lot of the science geeks out there enjoy reading and understanding more about the mTOR pathway. So HMV actually does have a direct increase in myofibrillar protein synthesis via the mTOR pathway. So for you guys out there that like that, you can look more into that as well. So, okay. Yeah, uh, very cool studies. Ooh. Do we know what we're selling for? No, we're not. We don't okay. actually. It's launching. Yeah, it's launching this week. So. Right. Mm -hmm. But as you guys know, as with all of our prices, extremely affordable yeah. um, because we want these uh, products to get into the hands of everybody. Everybody. So again, the warehouse, uh, our manufacturer has the pallets. They're being shipped yeah, to us this ship. week. This week. It's going to be live. Make sure you get your hands. All right, who should take it? What should we expect? I'm going to look at some questions here too. So who should take it? Well, everybody. Everybody. Take okay. It. Well, who should not take it then maybe? Okay. So in my, okay, who should not take it? Actually, it really is not. So the kidney thing comes up because, oh, kidney health, because when you go to the kidney, when you go to your physician and you get your blood work done and your serum creatinine, which is one of your metrics for kidney uh, health, is elevated or on the high end of normal, you know, if you're taking creatine, that can happen. But however, it's not actually the creatine that's causing any kidney damage. It may have just elevated that serum creatinine number a little bit, but that doesn't mean there's kidney damage. As a matter of fact, dialysis clinics now, with people on dialysis have been studied, they're chronically low because their kidney is not activating. Remember we said earlier about how the kidney right. and liver has to activate creatine in the body. If you're not getting enough in your diet, it's not doing it. So our dialysis patients are suffering with low creatine levels. And what's happening is they're losing their muscle mass, right. they no energy, they, their, their cognitive function that is declining. It, it, believe it or not, it's absolutely a big deal for them. And so now more nef nephrologists are adopting creatine supplementation in dialysis patients. Now I am certainly not sit sitting here telling you if you're on dialysis to do that. I am telling you though, however, to discuss it with your nephrologist or your medical provider, but it has been debunked that this causes kidney disease. As a matter of fact, there are two associations here, at least two, I know there's more, and I'll read those to you as soon as I can find it, but the American College of Sports Medicine, and which you're familiar with, Lisa, you remember that, and Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, they do not consider renal function a concern for use. So that's a really big deal because for a long time, everybody thought, well, if you have kidney damage, you can't take creatine or vice versa, the kidney, the creatine right. could cause kidney damage. Right. Not, and, not true. And then again, how to take. How to take, you know, yes. Daily. Okay. The studies show on it daily. because. Daily. So um, I think uh, I was reading that within four weeks, so if you completely stop the creatine, everything will reverse. Four to six weeks. It'll correct. That's correct. Effect. Yeah. So yep. it, you want to be taking it every day, ideally after a workout. Sure. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. After a workout. I was always under the impression that it was almost like fuel for the workout. It's right. not. It's just replacing the stores that were going to be depleted by the body naturally. So right. after a workout with carbohydrates and some protein. And if you're not working out. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah just, yeah, just make sure you're taking it daily. Mm -hmm. We are big believers of not flavoring things when possible. So therefore, this is not flavored. It's not bad. Mix it with water. It's totally palatable. Doesn't taste bad at all. Drink it. No, no issue. One scoop. It's only eight grams. It's literally just creatine and HMB. There's nothing else to it. I mean, that's what's amazing about this thing. So you guys will really appreciate that. Right. And there are some benefits, like it's a, that you can combine it with taking it with carbohydrates. So yep. this is something too, like. Sure. If you were taking it after a workout, I mean, you guys can throw it into your smoothie. Like sometimes it's like the sure. combination of things not having to mix. Yeah, that's how I'm doing. So it right Absolutely. Yeah. And also um, what to expect. You can expect an increase in lean muscle mass, stamina, endurance, performance in four weeks, actually, as early as two weeks, just okay. by supplementing with creatine. It is approved by the International Olympic Committee. It's not, not it is not banned by the World Anti-Doping Agency. I mean, this is considered an, a, a, an approved performance Yep. Enhancing 100%. molecule. One of the studies I was reading that says with increase in strength by 10 to 15 percent really in four big. weeks. That's really big. That is a very big deal. Really big I mean, deal. the studies all support this. The literature is there. Yes. So there's no reason to not start supplementing with your creatine HMV. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, no need for loading dose. So some some people have discussed loading dose to, to get your saturation levels up or to reach your steady state concentration. Not necessary. You can do between two and five grams every day. And after about four weeks, you'll reach your steady state concentration. And then you're just in a maintenance phase. But you can do that same scoop. I do, depends a little bit on weight, but for average people, everybody about one scoop a day. It's five grams of creatine monohydrate and three grams of beta hydroxy beta methylbutyrate. 